Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dallas with Gadget Hacks, and today I'm going to show you how to update your rooted Nexus 6 while keeping forced encryption disabled. This will also work if you're not rooted, or if you have a custom recovery installed that you'd like to keep. Basically, what we'll be doing today is flashing the factory images in Fastboot, but only the images that we need. And because we're using Fastboot, this all assumes that your bootloader is unlocked. If you rooted using CF Auto Root, or if you installed a modified boot.ing to get rid of encryption, you've already taken care of that anyway. So to get started, you'll have to put your Nexus into bootloader mode. To do that, start by powering your device completely off. When the screen goes black, press and hold the volume down and power buttons simultaneously. This is the bootloader menu, so we're good to go here. Now all that's left to do with the phone is connect it to your computer using a USB data cable. Then we'll pick back up over on that side of things. I wanted to do this guide in a way that anyone could use it regardless of their computer's operating system. So instead of using Nexus Root Toolkit, which is a Windows program that essentially puts a GUI front end on Fastboot and ADB, we'll actually be using the command prompt today. But NRT is still obviously a good option for Windows users, so I've got some instructions for that method over at the full tutorial as well. If you want to go that route, just head to the link in the description below this video and you'll find some pretty clear cut instructions. But to get started with the OS agnostic method, you'll need to install the ADB and Fastboot drivers on your computer. This part will be a little bit different depending on whether you're using Windows, Mac, or Linux, but I've got all the files that you'll need linked out at the full tutorial as well. But since I'm using a Windows machine, I'll show you how it works on this setup. Start by downloading the Universal ADB driver by Koosh. When it's done, go ahead and launch the installer file. From here, just follow the prompts for installation, and your computer will be able to fully interact with your Nexus 6 from now on. Next, it's time to get the actual ADB and Fastboot utilities. There are two ways you can go about doing this. Either install the full Android Software Developers Kit, or get a slimmed down version that basically focuses on only ADB and Fastboot. Again, this will be a bit different depending on your operating system, but the necessary files are all linked out at the full tutorial. So for Windows, I'm going to use Minimal ADB and Fastboot, which is an easy installation version created by developer Shimp208. Installation for this one is just as simple as the drivers. Just run the installer file and breeze through the setup wizard. When it's finished installing though, a command window will open. Take a look at the location that it shows on the prompt. See Program Files x86 Minimal ADB and Fastboot. This is an important folder because to make things easier we'll be putting the image files in here. So I'm going to browse to that location and keep an explorer window open to it. The same goes for Mac and Linux, where you would just find the ADB and Fastboot files and open the folder that contains them. Okay, so to summarize, so far we've installed ADB and Fastboot, which are two tools to interact with your Nexus. We've also installed the proper drivers so that the computer and the phone can communicate with one another. And regardless of your OS, you should also have the folder that contains ADB and Fastboot open in a window. So the next step is to download the factory images from the official website. You can find those by googling factory images for Nexus devices, then clicking the top result. Here we'll look for the Nexus 6 section, then find the most recent build, which right now is 5.0.1. So click the link to download that, and I'm going to skip ahead to when it's finished. Okay, with the factory images downloaded, head to your computer's download folder. From here, go ahead and extract the contents of the file. If you need a program that can handle these types of archives, I recommend 7-Zip. It's free and it handles everything. So once you've extracted the contents, you'll find another archive. Go ahead and extract that one too. After that, head into the folder it creates, and you'll find a third archive. Extract that one as well. Now to prevent any file name issues, I'd recommend that you set your computer to show file type extensions. This is a bit different depending on your operating system, but with Windows, just go to View, Options, then Change Folder and Search Options. From here, click the View tab, then make sure that Hide Extensions for Known File Types is unticked. After that, just click OK, and all of the files on your computer should now have their extensions visible. Now that you've done that, you can take a look at all the files that you've extracted from the factory image archive. Go ahead and delete everything that doesn't end in .img, just to simplify. These files are basically installation scripts that we don't need since we're doing this manually. If you take a look around now, you should be left with seven image files. First, we have the boot image. This is the one that forces encryption on the Nexus 6, so we definitely don't want that. Go ahead and delete it. Next, we have the bootloader image. This is a useful one, but to simplify, let's just rename that to bootloader.img. 
After that, there's cache.img. This is basically just an empty folder structure that would overwrite your existing cached data with nothing, so we don't want that either. Go ahead and delete cache.img as well. Next is the radio image file. This is for connectivity binaries, and it's been updated a little from the previous version, so let's keep that one. But again, rename this one to simply radio.img. After that, there's the stock recovery image. If you use a custom recovery, which is a must for rooted users, you don't want to override it with the stock recovery. So definitely delete this one if you're using TWRP or Clockwork Mod, for instance. The next image is system.img. This one contains all the core files for the Android operating system. It's essentially the biggest part of the update package, so leave that one alone. Finally, there's userdata.img. Just like cache, this is basically an empty folder tree, and if you want to keep all your existing data, you don't want to override it with that. So delete this one as well. In the end, we're left with just three files, bootloader, radio, and system. And that honestly makes up almost the entire core of Android. Almost. The kernel and other hardware level coding are contained on the boot image, but that's the one that forces encryption, so we couldn't use the stock version. Instead, we'll have to download a modified version of the same file, one that doesn't force encryption. Credit for this one goes to developer Zorzone, who essentially took the stock boot.img from 5.0.1 and told it not to enforce encryption. So go ahead and download that, which again is linked out at the full tutorial. Then when it's finished, move the file into the folder with your other three image files. Then one more time for the sake of simplicity, rename this file to just boot.img. So now we have all four core images for the new version of Android. We just need to install them. To make it easier, move these four files over to the folder that contains ADB and Fastboot. Now hold down the Shift key on your keyboard then right click any empty space and select open command window here. This is where the fun stuff begins. Start by typing fast boot devices, then hit enter. You should see a series of letters and numbers followed by the word fast boot. This means that your device is connected properly. So next we'll install the new bootloader. Go ahead and type fast boot flash bootloader bootloader.img. When you hit enter, the new bootloader will be installed on your Nexus. So let's restart the bootloader to use the new version from here out. Type fastboot reboot hyphen bootloader. Then hit enter. After that, let's install the new radio. Type fastboot flash radio radio.img and hit enter. Next, let's do the boot image. Fastboot flash boot boot.img. Finally, we can install the new system image the one with all the core Android stuff. Type fastboot flash system system.img and hit enter. This one will take a bit longer because it's by far the biggest file we're installing here. Also worth noting, this will overwrite your existing root files, so you'll need to reroute once you're done here. But when the system image has finished installing, your phone has officially been updated to the latest version of Android. You can go ahead and type fastboot reboot to boot back into Android, but if you'd like to get root access back, the easiest way would be to download CF Auto Root. I've got this linked out at the full tutorial, and it's about as simple as it gets. Just extract the file, then look for the script that corresponds to your operating system. Since your phone is still in fastboot mode, all you have to do is double-click the script. When it's done, your phone will automatically reboot, and you'll be rooted. Not only that, but you'll be running the latest version of Android. In the future, if a new version comes out, all you'd have to do is download the new images and install them using the same method. Since you already have ADB, Fastboot, and the proper drivers installed on your system, you can skip through most of this tutorial and get straight to flashing the images. But right about now, my voice is starting to give out, so it's time to sign off. And I know this was a lot to take in from one video, so if you'd like to follow along at your own pace, be sure to check out my article over on GadgetHacks.com. As always, though, we'd appreciate it if you would like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel. So we'll see you again next time, folks, but until then, happy gadget hacking!